Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. We're just comparing the King James Version with the rather new Legacy Standard Bible put out by John MacArthur, Masters University. And let's get started. It's been our experience over several of these comparisons that the LSB is still, it's a reclension. It means it's taken out a lot of verses to textual criticism, but maybe not quite as many as like the RSV, NRSV, NLT, NASB of various iterations, ESV of various generations, definitely not the NIV, TNIV, NIV of 2011, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go to Acts 10.6. Thanks for being here. We'll start in the King James. And this is an angel talking to Cornelius. He lodgeth one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. To be saved, that's Acts 11, 14, 15. The angel says here in the LSB, he is lodging with a tanner named Simon whose house is by the sea. You quickly see a very large phrase is mentioning, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So it's not just about easy to read and all this. This is a totally different Greek text these Bibles are translating from, as could be obvious. And so this is, you know, the, this is the text now received by all. This was the text of 99% out of every 100 Greek manuscripts, King James Version. Okay, 9-5, 9-5, this is Paul's vision of the book of Acts. We want to do say thanks for being here. We'll start off in the Legacy Standard Bible. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Okay, so in 9-5, and he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And notice this, another large phrase is missing. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So this completely takes us away from the time of Paul sanctioning Stephen's death to now that God was dealing with Paul. And so just totally removes that. It's massive. So let's keep going here in the book of Acts. We'll go to Acts 8.37. And so in the Legacy Standard Bible, it's going to be in brackets. At least it's there, but it's going to be in brackets. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God. Now, that's missing in most Bibles modern translations like the ESV, the NIV, et al. At least it's in brackets, but that gives, still makes you doubt the word of God. Genesis 3, yea, hath God said. And so you're going to read that and think, well, that doesn't have quite, I mean, I'm just telling you by personal experience. You just read it and think, well, that doesn't have quite the force of the rest of scripture because it's debated. So 8.37 in the King James, and Philip said, If thou believest all thine heart, thou mayest be answered, and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So, of course, this would have been taken out by the liturgical church, the, orth, you know, the Orthodox Catholic Church, when they would have begun doing catechisms before you could get baptized. That would crimp their style, so to speak. Let's go to Acts 7.30. This is Stephen's preaching before the people who were going to stone him. I feel like that occasionally. And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. So 7.30 here, and I'm very thankful this is not paragraph format, and after 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in the flame of a burning bush. Notice, angel of the Lord. So, and so you could come up with strange doctrines from this, but it's specific that it's an angel of the Lord there. Um, let's go to Acts 2.30. Acts 2.30. This is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost. 2.30. 
And so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to set one of the fruit of his body on the throne. That's Legacy Standard Bible, the King James. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, here's the thing, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. So this takes away monophysitism, Gnosticism. Jesus, you know, didn't have a physical body. This makes it extremely clear in the King James. Like we did Hebrews. There's a passage in Hebrews that they totally eviscerate that as well. Um, so it's not just different. It's not just a shorter text. It's it means different things, has great theological implications. So let's look at Acts 1-3, where Luke is writing to Theophilus. And he says this, in whom he also presented himself alive after suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over 40 days and speaking of things concerning the kingdom of God. And uh, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. He goes on with the rest. So actually the legacy standard does better than most there. Convincing proofs, infallible proofs, obviously infallible proofs are going to be much stronger, but at least it's got some modifier before proofs. And indicating it wasn't just some proofs, but it, it was substantial proofs. So we appreciate that. So overall, I mean, it's still a shorter text. It's still using um, the minority text, the critical text, you know, uh, critical theory of Marxism and all this, where it's all started. You can follow textual criticism. David Cloud's got a great book on that. It's meant to destroy the authenticity of the Word of God. And so... And by the way, that's not an Illuminati hand sign. This is just me talking. I just need to clarify that. Because people are making videos of me making hand signs. It's weird. Um, and so the KJV is the text behind, you know, 99 out of every 100 Greek manuscripts, according to Bergan. So there you have it. Talk with you later. Check out our other videos on the channel. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. See you later. Bye-bye.